Hi there, and welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire with more of my favorite crafty things of 2016. Today I'm going to talk all about crafting tools and the tools that I think are helpful to create handmade cards. Now I'm not going to talk about stamping tools or die cutting tools because I did on the first couple days of this series. So if you haven't watched those videos, be sure to go back and watch those. I'm going to talk about all the other tools that I think are helpful. I link to the products that I talk about in my description below uh, here on YouTube, but I do recommend to go over to my blog because I'll have a couple discount codes and some big giveaways and some more information there. Let's get started with the Hero Arts heat gun. I swear by this heat gun. Anybody who has used this knows that it is a superior tool and is really worth the investment. I've used one since the beginning of my crafting days. Now it used to be made by Milwaukee and now it's made by Wagner. So you might see either name. Both are great if they're the ones distributed by Hero Arts. This is a fantastic heat gun that gets super hot. So it heats your embossing powder quickly and you don't get as much warping with your cardstock. It really is significantly better. If you're new to card making, you could go for a really inexpensive option, but I think you'll end up upgrading to this later on because it is such a great tool. So I can't recommend this enough. I honestly think it's great. Whenever I go to heat something up, I do let it get hot for about 20 seconds before I bring it to my paper. Okay, now to go along with the heat gun, I do recommend the anti-static powder tool from EK Success. There are some powder pouches out there, but I find much better success with the anti-static powder tool because it's a true white and it rubs off nicely and it's easier to control. So here I use the anti-static powder tool on the area that I just stamped with embossing ink. And then in the other one that I stamped with embossing ink that I'm putting powder on now, I did not use the tool. And you'll see how powder sticks in other places thanks to any oils or adhesives on my hands. I can't recommend the anti-static powder tool enough to get clean heat embossed images. It's definitely worth the investment. You can also use it like if you have some sticky adhesive maybe on the edge of something and you wanna remove that, you can just use the powder tool and it will remove that stickiness. This is one of those tools that will last you till the end of time because there's so much powder in it. So you really, you only need one and it'll be good to go for a long time. So you can see the image where I use the powder is significantly better. Now the powder in this just comes out on its own, but I kind of like to shake it down so that a little bit of it comes out and then I brush it around. Now after your heat embossed image has cooled, you can just wipe away the powder and nobody will know that it was ever there. It really makes quite a big difference in your heat embossing. Another tool that really helps with creating clean, nice looking cards is the mono sand eraser. I don't know if you've ever accidentally gotten some ink on paper where you don't want it, maybe like on your fingertip. I just purposefully did a little bit of ink on my cardstock here to show you how you can remove it. This is the mono sand eraser. It reminds me kind of of a fingernail file, but you just rub the tip over it and it kind of sands off that ink. So you can remove any ink that is on there and you just keep going back and forth and it will smooth out and nobody will have ever seen it. You can use an eraser after that to smooth it out even more if you want to. Now, if you stamp a giant image in black, this isn't gonna take it off. But if you just have an accidental little, accidental little ink splotch somewhere, this tool is super handy. It's inexpensive and it has saved the day many, many times for me. So it's one of those that's good to have on hand. Keep it somewhere safe because it is tiny and it likes to hide, but it is definitely worth it. A mechanical pencil is also something that I think is very helpful. The reason I like a mechanical pencil is it always stays sharp and it, the eraser on this particular mechanical pencil is large. You just kind of unscrew it and more and more of the eraser comes out. So this pencil will last you for a long time. These are the pencils that all my kids use at school too. I really like these and they're great for crafting because you can draw some faint lines with it and very easily erase it. Now one of the tools that I use the most for card making is only a few dollars and it is so worth it. It's a tea ruler. So you put the top of the tea up against the edge of your paper and then you know that the ruler is straight. You can use this for measuring or drawing lines or centering things, but one of the handiest things to use it for is to stamp a sentiment straight. So I have inked up a sentiment here from Concord and Ninth with some, with some Lawn Fawn ink. You could use any sentiment for this. I'm gonna put the top of the T right up against the edge of my paper, put the ruler right about where I want my stamping, and then I line the stamp up with the edge of the ruler and it stamps perfectly straight. 
This is really handy if you don't have another stamping tool. And I just use a T-ruler for just about everything. I use it often to center things up. Now this Crystal Ninja tool has been very handy with adding little embellishments onto my card. I used to use one where you had to squeeze like the tip out and it was kind of driving me nuts. So I switched to this one and I'm happy with it. Now I will say it is a little bit more of an expensive tool, but I am using it quite often. So that black part happens to be a little bit sticky, but it just stays that way. It's pretty cool how it works. And you touch the little sequin or little embellishment to that black tip and you can pick it up and move it wherever you want. The other end has a like kind of a sharper tip, but not one that would really poke you. So you can kind of move things on the project once you have an adhesive very easily. So here you can see how you just pick it up with that black tip and put it wherever you want it to be. So I usually use a strong adhesive with my sequins, so I would just drop it into a little dot of the sequins and then I could move it around with the sharper end tip. This has been a great tool. Okay, another tool that I use often and I have for many years is the EK Success tweezers. These grab on themselves, so you squeeze them to release and then they hold onto the paper when you let go. The nice thing about this is you can grab up a fine detailed die cut with the tweezers and it holds it automatically. You can set it down, add a little drops of adhesive to the back of it, and then put it wherever you want on your project. It's really easier to place tiny die cuts with tweezers because your big fingers don't get in the way when you're trying to find the exact spot to do it. You can also use these tweezers when heat embossing small things so you don't burn your fingers. These tweezers have taken a beating over the years and I can always clean the tip off just fine and use them again. Now, one of the tools that I think people don't think it's really worth it because they cost a little bit more, but I promise you that they are. Anybody who's tried one would agree. The Teflon Bolden Folder. Now there are other types of Bolden Folders out there, but the Teflon Bolden fold Folder, that's a mouthful, Teflon Bolden Folder is amazing because it, it scores so smoothly and it doesn't leave marks on your paper. So you could use it with a scoring tool if you want to, a scoring board. But I just use the little ledge in my trimmer just to save some money instead of having a, a scoring board. And I just score right along that line. You can see the nice score line I get. Then I use the side of the bone folder to crease it. And I don't get any marks from the Teflon bone folder. I really do recommend it. This might be something worth asking for for Christmas because it's a few more dollars than a regular bone folder. But if you're scoring a lot of cards and making a lot of cards, it's worth it. And I will tell you that my friend Heather, who works with me, she was over today actually while I was filming this, and she said she had never thought she needed a bone folder until she used it, and she agrees. It's one of those things that once you use it, you're happy you have. Another product that I use in almost every video I create is micropore tape. Now, I usually use the narrow half inch roll and it has a little dispenser on it that's really handy and that's what I will link to. I actually ran out and I'm waiting for more to be delivered. So I, I'm just showing a different roll of micropore tape, but the one I recommend is narrow and has a little dispenser. But micropore tape is great because it's thin, it tears easy, you can reuse the pieces, and you can tape things down temporarily, like maybe a die as you run it through your die cut machine, and it won't tear the paper when you pull it off. I really do recommend this over washi tape because sometimes washi tape will tear your paper. And also you can reuse these pieces a few times. It's definitely worth trying out. Now for trimmers, I know a lot of people talk about trimmers and I have a very involved video coming out soon, but I wanted to share three here. For years, I have used the Fiskars Wired Guide, Wire Guide Trimmer. Now this trimmer is fantastic, but there's a few things I wanted to say. There is a sticker, a clear sticker that comes over the trimmer that protects it. You wanna make sure to remove that before you use it because I found that some people get their blade caught up on that plastic. So go ahead and remove that. That might help you out. Now this trimmer does have an arm that swings out so you can measure long pieces and it has measuring to the right of the cutting line so that you can measure thin little strips very easily and cut them easily. Now what's special about this trimmer is that it has a wire guide. So when you put paper in it, you can see exactly where your a blade will cut. There's no guessing at all. I do know that some people have trouble with that wire breaking. Fiskars will always replace it, but I know some people find that their wire breaks often. 
I have been using this trimmer for many years and I've never had a single wire break. I think it depends on how the person uses the trimmer. My best friend, she breaks the wires all the time. I don't know what it is. I think maybe we use the trimmer differently. But if you find that wire breaks for you often, the next trimmer might be for you. But I really still like this one. You can get titanium replacement blades so they last longer. And I've been happy with it all along. Now, I like to use this type of trimmer over a guillotine usually because I have kids and I don't want them near a blade that can cut them. This one seems much safer for me. But if you're looking for a large trimmer with like a guillotine blade, I would check out my video from last year. I recommend one in that. Now, I'm just going to hold this up. Can you see that wire there in the little arm that flaps down? There's a little wire there and that tells you where the blade will cut. So I'm going to put some paper in here. You can see the wire in between there. It's very thin. I really count on this. So when I'm trying to cut something exactly along a stamped edge or whatever, I can count on that wire showing me exactly where it will cut. Now I use this trimmer about 50% of the time. In a few minutes, I'm gonna show you the other trimmer that I use. But first, I do wanna show you another option. If you have this trimmer and you like it, but it doesn't cut straight for you or the wire breaks for you, here's another option. It looks almost exactly the same, but this is the reinforced version. Look at the place where the blade is. There's a metal reinforced arm there instead of the wire guide. So this way you can be sure it will cut straight every time, even though I don't have trouble with the other one not cutting straight, and there's no wire to worry about. So all of my friends who have trouble with the wires breaking with the other trimmer have loved this option because you get all the benefits without the wire. So this does have an arm that swings out. There is a lock feature just like the other one. And to the right of the cutting line, there are measuring lines. So you can like measure out thin little strips like a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch. The blade required for this trimmer is a little bit different because it kind of hugs that metal bar. And I'll be honest, I haven't used it enough to know how long that blade lasts, but so far so good. And you can get replacement blades. Now the way you know where this is going to cut is the edge of the metal line is going to be where the blade cuts. So I put my paper in here, I'll close the arm on it, and you'll see right along the edge of that metal bar is where I'll cut. So you can tell with this trimmer also where the cutting will happen. I just happen to be in love with that wired guide trimmer because I've used it so many times, but this is another great option. Essentially the trimmer is the same except for the arm. So I do promise to do a video as soon as possible showing a bunch of different trimmers and how they compare because I think everybody needs something a little bit different out of a trimmer. So it's best to see what they all have to offer. Now the other trimmer that I use about 50% of the time, I use the wire guide one from Fiskars and I also use my baby. I call this my baby. This is the Tim Holtz Tonic Trimmer. Now this trimmer has different things to offer, but what I like about it so much is it cuts like butter. It just feels good to use. It is a great trimmer. It cuts straight. It's great. So now Tonic is a great company. It's a great quality product. Now this is one of those guillotine kind of trimmers that you want to be careful of with kids, but it does have a little guard that you want to hold when you cut so your paper doesn't shift. Now this isn't as tall of a trimmer, so you can't put like a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock in here, but as a card maker, I find I never really cut that size. Also, you can't score with this one like I do with my other trimmer. That's why I use both. I honestly use both trimmers a lot. Now you can cut super thin lines perfectly without a fuzzy edge with this trimmer, but there aren't any measuring lines to the right of the cutting area, so you wanna keep that in mind too. If you're cutting with a big piece of paper, just make sure you have your hand on the paper or on that guard. So you hold the paper down and it will cut straight every time and it cuts like butter and you can cut through a few sheets. It really is a nice trimmer to have. And remember, everybody is different in what they need in a trimmer. So I'm hoping that this will help you decide what's best for you. Okay, now let's talk about scissors. Now these are some silly scissors that I have fallen completely for. They're called Twiggy Compact Scissors. They have a little cap on them, and then you just pull the little switch down, and you have these great scissors that you can take on the go. If you're like me and you take stitching projects or coloring projects on the go and you want to cut them out by hand, these are so fun to have because they're safe. 
So you just kind of unlock it and then you can just cut away with them. I have no problems cutting with these. They're nice and sharp. When you're done, you just lock them and then put the cap on. So I have these in kind of my to-go coloring bag, which I'll show you in a video soon. They're really handy. Now, I'm not going to reach for these for everyday crafting, but if you like to take things on the go, these are good. There is a little spot on the top of the scissors where you can loop like some string through so that you can hook them onto things. What I like to do when I go to baseball games with my to watch my son and I bring projects to work on, I hook this around my neck so that I don't keep dropping them over and over again or I hook it around my bag so I don't lose them. So it is handy to have that too. So I just wanted to share these fun scissors in case you're an on-the-go crafter like me. Now, if you've ever been to my house, you will see Tim Holtz scissors everywhere. We use them in the garden. We use them in our office for school stuff, in my craft room. They are by far my favorite scissors because they stay sharp. They don't get sticky. They're high quality and the handles are soft so your hand doesn't get tired. Well, Tim Holtz just recently came out with this baby size. These are the Tim Holtz snips. So these are smaller than the ones that he's carried before. Now, I just got these in the mail. The reason I included them on the list is that I have loved these scissors very much and I'm very happy that there's a smaller size. I like smaller scissors. Some people do, some people don't. I find they're easier to turn curves when you're cutting out tiny things. And I really like the size of these. My kids did too. It does have the cap that keeps them safer. So if you are interested in this type of scissor, there are two other sizes. The original size is the one in the middle. And then the big ones came out a little bit after that, and now there are the baby ones. Personally, I use that middle size the most often, but I think I'll probably switch to the smaller snip size now that I have them. But all three are great quality and will last you a long time. I also think it's good to have a pair of scissors with a longer tip. These are the Fiskars Amplify scissors. So say I glue a piece to the front of a card and I need to trim it off the edge. These are the ones I reach for because they're good to cut along long edges. They're also very sharp and great for cutting your ribbons and your fabric. And I use them for anything bigger I want to cut out. So I do have basically in my craft room three types of scissors that I use on a daily basis. The Tim Holtz scissors I just showed you. This is the second pair. And the third pair I use is the Fiskars Micro Tip scissors. These are spring assist. So when you squeeze them, it pops back on its own. Super sharp tip. There are a few different versions of this. Just make sure to get the ones that are titanium in the tip, and they're going to last you a very long time. I have used this type of scissor for many years, and it's the one I always go back to. So I probably use these the most because they're handy for cutting around tiny areas, but I also use the Fiskars Amplify big scissors I just showed you and the Tim Holtz when I want to cut up something that is a little more rugged, I would say. But for cutting up cardstock, these are fantastic. So here's my little scissors family. These are the scissors I reach for the most. Any of them I would recommend, and they all keep me happy in my craft room. Now for a water bottle, there are a few out there that are nice. I keep going back to the Hero Arts water bottle for a few reasons. It's bigger, so I don't have to go and refill it as often. It gives a nice even spritz, which is always very helpful. But then the little dip tube in it, the little uh, like straw that goes down into it, is long, so it curls along the bottom. So even if you only have a little bit of water left, it reaches down and gets it. So you can see the tube here. So you don't get stuck with some of it just kind of trapped in the bottom. You can also add colors to this, reinkers and perfect pearls to make mixes if you want to. So what I would probably say is the best product of 2016 are these Clarity Stamps brushes. These brush tips are fantastic for applying ink to paper to create soft backgrounds. There are other brushes on the market, but these are perfectly shaped and perfect for applying ink just how you want it. They really do work heads and shoulders above the rest. So the way I do this is with any ink, I just brush the tip on it, brush some of the excess ink off on scrap paper, and then bring it to my paper and softly go back and forth. You can use these over stencils. You can apply even more to make it darker, but I really like these for soft coloring like you see me doing on the edge here. Great for soft skies or just adding a little bit of ink to the edge of a project. 
These stencil brushes are great. I have a video coming up soon. I've shown you peaks of all the cards in previous videos in this series. They're really great. Now, as far as how many to get, that's up to you. You could have one for each color family. I bought a few boxes of the brushes because I use them much, so much, but you can just brush off the color and move to another if you want to. Okay, now if you're looking for heavier color of ink, I do recommend the mini ink blending tool from Ranger. These are kind of meant to work with distress inks, but you could use them with any inks you want. When you do this, you want to kind of hold the tool kind of at an angle and start off the paper on scrap paper or on a craft sheet and slowly work your way onto the paper. That allows you to get a smooth look without any harsh lines. If you want to blend it out even softer, you could grab those clarity brushes and add some more color that way. Between these two, you can get a beautiful like ombre looking background or sky background. I can't recommend either enough. And I will say, I don't think that the Clarity brushes replace your ink blending tool. They're really used for softer looks. I still use the ink blending tools just as much. Now you can have an ink blending tool foam for each color of ink you have. And you can use these with any types of ink, but they're best with distress inks. You can Velcro a piece of foam to the bottom of an ink pad, and then that, that foam is designated for that color. Or you can put it in the bottom of a mini ink pad and it holds there nicely. It fits perfectly. So I really do recommend both tools. Another inking tool that I do like is the Jumbo Dauber. These I use most often with, dis, uh, I'm sorry, with pigment inks, or you can use them with dye inks for kind of a medium coverage. They really hold up well. You can see they apply evenly and you can do fun stenciling techniques with them. I really like this tool, especially with pigment inks, like a white pigment ink on a colored background, maybe over a stencil. It's a really fun tool to have. You can also use it, since it's a perfect circle, to create fun backgrounds. So you can either press hard or you can press soft and get these perfect little circles. So now that we've talked about inking, let's talk about masking tools. Masking is a technique that is essential for stampers. And there are three different types of products I use to mask. First is the Inka Dinka Do Masking Paper. This is a great product meant for masking, so it has the perfect amount of stick to it and the perfect thickness. You can cut, stamp on this, cut it out, and reuse the mask a few times. In fact, I'll save a mask with a stamp set in the same pocket so that I can reuse the mask in the future. There are several sheets in this package and I find that they do last quite a while and I keep them together in this clear folder so I don't lose my extra little pieces. Every little piece can be used. Now, if you want a more economical way and you don't do many big images, you could instead use these two other options. One is the wide post-it tape from 3M. Okay, so this product comes this way. So there's like over a thousand inches in this package. There's an edge where you can tear along to tear off the pieces that you want. This is a new one that I bought to replace when the other one runs out, but it's not even close to running out yet. There's so much on this roll. Now this is like a post-it note, but in a roll form. So what you can do is put it onto your table, stamp and cut it out, and you can have basically a post-it mask. Now this one I feel you can't reuse as many times, but by all means, if you're going to use a mask only a couple times, this may be a more economical option for you. You can just tear off whatever size you need, stamp on it, and cut out. Another option, if you usually do smaller images, is to use post-it notes with full adhesive on the back. So these aren't normal post-it notes. The entire back of these post-it notes has adhesive on it. So you can take off a few sheets, stamp on it, cut it out, and then you can actually have multiple masks of the same stamped image because you cut them all out at once. So if you mass produce cards like me, that might be a good option for you. So this is a really quick and easy uh, masking paper that you can use, and several of these pads come together in the pack. Another product that's handy to have in your craft room is Glad Press and Seal. My friend Laura Basson has done several videos with how you can use this. I've shown some videos with it too, and I'll link to all of those below. This product is nice because it's kind of like saran wrap, but different. You tear it off, you place it wherever you want, and then when you press it, it seals. So you could have like a bowl of water, press around the edge of the bowl, and it will seal it. So you can see when you press it, it sticks to your finger. But if you don't press it, it doesn't stick. So you can use this, like you can uh, die cut a bunch of flowers, lay them on your table exactly how you want them, 
Put a piece of this over it and pick them all up at once. Flip it over and put adhesive on the back and then stick it down onto your project. It also helps with die cut inlay techniques. Now I'm taking a little container of needles here and I took the lid off and I just put the press and seal on it just to show you how you use it in its typical use, how it's intended to be used. So you can kind of seal something up. I've also been known to have a bowl of water on my craft table for watercolor and I use this to seal it so I don't spill it while I'm creating. You can also put a bigger piece of this down to keep your work surface clean and then pick it up and throw it away when you're done. I do like that it is sticky enough and you can reuse it a few times. And my husband happens to be the inventor of this product, it's something that he did at Procter & Gamble and they licensed the idea to Glad. But I promise that's not why I use it. It really is handy to have in the craft room. And no, we don't get anything out of the sales of this product. I just really like it. Okay, now the tool that I've said before in my series that I use more than any is the cordless pivot vac. Any kind of cordless vacuum that closes up small is great to have in your craft room because if you get glitter or embossing powder, you spill it, or you get little odds and ends of adhesive release paper or little die cut pieces all over, you can just take this out and quickly suck them up and take them away. This saves the day for me because I generally have a mess around me while I create. So I just get this out of my cabinet, and then once it's filled, you just pop the side open and dump it into a trash can. There is a little charger that you set it on. I have that in my cabinet too. And you can recharge it so it's nice and charged and ready to go. So handy to have something cordless. I have one of these in my kitchen too. I also like coffee filters when I am crafting. They are great for kind of containing messes, especially if you're using glitter or embossing powder. I even am known to pour sequins in there because they're easy to put back into the container with the coffee filter. So say I've poured some glitter onto a project I have left over in the coffee filter. I can just kind of funnel that coffee filter down so that all the glitter ends up back in the container. And then I can tap off the extra glitter in the coffee filter into my trash can and reuse the coffee filter a few times. If you are done with the coffee filter, you can just crumble it up and throw it away and you won't have any mess on your work surface. These really have become handy, especially with heat embossing. Another product I like with glitter and heat embossing are Swifter, Swiffer dusting cloths. Now one cloth goes a long way. So what I do is I take a couple cloths, I cut them into smaller pieces because you don't need a big piece each time you create a project. So I have this little stack next to my work surface. So when I need to clean something up, I just take one piece out. These are great for dusting your floor, but they're also great for cleaning up messes. Say you get some glitter on your work surface and you know how glitter just spreads like nobody's business. This helps to clean it up. So all you do, say I've made this glitter mess, you take the Swiffer, wipe along it, and you pick up all the glitter on it. It holds it all wonderfully. Now these are disposable, so I like to use it as much as possible before I pitch it away. I even use it to clean up my hands when I'm done. And once you feel it's full, you just pitch that small piece and move on to the next one. I find one Swiffer I can use for multiple projects. Along the same lines of cleanup is a microfiber cloth. These are nice because they're reusable and you can just wash them to use over and over again. Now the reason I use the microfiber cloth is it helps to grab things too. So if I have little bits of glitter or little die cuts, it quickly will pick them up. I also use these to dry off my stamps after I've cleaned them, to wipe up any ink that I have on my craft sheet. I use this for a lot of things. They may stain, no problem. It doesn't bother me at all. Once I feel like I've used one enough, I shake it off over my trash can and throw it in the laundry, and then I have another one ready to go. So you can use these over and over again. They're handy to have. They're not too expensive. You can get them just about anywhere, and they usually come in multiples in a pack. Now I wanted to mention this stamp chamois again. I shared this on my stamping day. This is a nice tool for cleaning up your stamps. It cleans them like butter. I just really like it. You can see it does get stained, that's okay. So what you do when you get this is it's very firm. You just run it under some water and it becomes soft and it's perfect for cleaning your stamps. Now in my video I showed how I use this salt saver to keep it from drying out. If it dries out, you just re-wet it, but just to save time. I put it in here so that it doesn't dry out every time. It lets a little bit of air in so it doesn't get stinky. And it's really worked well, but I told you guys in the video that I can't find them anymore. 
Well, one of my readers was kind enough to show me this product and recommend it for the chamois. And so I bought it and I am really happy with it. So I'm sending her a little present as a thank you. It really works well. So you just close it when you're done using the chamois and you just let a little bit of air in the crack around it. And then when you need to use it again, if it's dried out at all, you can just spray it with a little bit of water and then grab it and go. It's nice to have a container for the chamois because if it does touch any paper, of course, it will wet it. You could also keep a baby wipe in here if you wanted to. But this chamois is great because you can keep using it over and over again. So I will link to this chamois holder. Thank you, Michelle, for recommending it. It really is a great fit. Okay, so another tool that is really helpful to have in your crafting room are some vinyl mesh bags. I like to have a bunch of these so that when I have a project I'm working on, I can put all the pieces in here so they don't get separated. Maybe I get a new stamp and some cardstock and some inks, and I want to make sure I use them together. I put them all into a bag, and it's kind of like a project bag or a project in progress bag. I also use these for toys for my kids or coloring and projects on the go. They're very handy. They're not too expensive. They hold up very well and can be used for a lot of things. They really help you to keep your projects in order. Now for a work surface, in my videos you often see me use the Simonsis Stamp Grid Pad. This has been so helpful to me. It's about a little over 16 inches by a little over 10 inches and it has the grid lines that help you with lining things up nicely. Now in my videos, I use these and I tear them off so I have clean work surface just to keep the videos looking nice. But in real life, I use these a lot and I get them all inky and then I fold it over and I use the other side and then I fold it again and use the other side. So you can get a lot out of one page. Now the grid lines, I help, I line those up with like the grid lines on my stamping block to make sure they're straight. I line them up with the uh, edge of my T-roller to make, thing, make sure things are straight. It really is helpful to have that grid line in the background. I can't recommend it enough. I also like working on a craft sheet still, but I only do that when I'm doing inking projects. But you can get a lot out of the stamp pad paper by folding it and reusing every side. Another surface I recommend for crafting is a good old fashioned cutting board with the handle. Now that seems kind of weird, but say you have something you want to heat emboss and you want to hold it still and you uh, want to bring heat to it and not worry about warping any paper around you, you can put it on the cutting board and heat it up all you need. Also say you're doing watercolor uh, and you want to tape the edges of watercolor down and be able to move your project around without having to tape it to your table, you can tape it to this board and then you can tilt it however you want. You can see mine are very inky because I use both sides of this often. So I don't actually do really cutting on it. You could if you wanted to. I just like that it is a board that will handle the heat, handle the mess and has a handle so I can move it around easy. I would recommend giving this a try if you like to do inking or painting. Now last but not least is an apron that just makes me very happy. I love the message on it. It has an adjustable neck strap. The colors are beautiful. There are three pockets on the bottom which are so handy when you're creating. You can see the three large pockets there. There are the long pieces that wrap around your waist. It's just a great apron to wear when you're creating. I like to wear an apron when I'm getting inky because I just am notorious for making a mess. And this is a nice one to have. So I have a discount, a discount code for this apron if you want to check that out over on my blog. I just think it's something nice and this would be a great gift. So there you have my crafting tools for 2016. I link them below in my YouTube description as always, but over on my blog I have those discount codes and giveaways. So be sure to check that out. Also keep in mind, everybody's a little bit different. These are just the products that I recommend and that I know my friends have enjoyed using also. Now in the middle there, I have links to the rest of the series if you want to check out that playlist and also to my favorite crafting tools from last year where I include a few other trimmers if you're looking for a different option. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it and we'll see you very soon.